Well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, uh, recently, on behalf of the police department, we released a statement regarding the implementation of our new body worn camera program. And the reason I felt uh, that was so important and that we needed to do that was to um, give information, provide information to the public regarding a significant investment that they've made in the police department that has now been placed on hold. Um, as you all know, in the last several years, and, and really even before that, transparency has been a big issue um, with police departments around the country. We want to be no different than that. We want to be as transparent as possible with everything we do. And when a public uh, entity, when the city of Oklahoma City and its residents invest a significant amount of money, um, millions of dollars into something and are not getting the results uh, of all of the things that are, are capable in that technology, we feel it's important to let everyone know where we're at and what's going on with that. And so that's why the statement was released today. And I'll answer any questions that uh, maybe you have. Can you just give us a basic um, situation or really like where all this started, where it is now? Sure. Um, <clears throat> our body worn cameras that we were using when they were originally implemented, uh, great technology. They were uh, on the cutting edge of, of camera technology at the time, but it's like anything, it's like your cell phones. After a few years, newer and better products come out and also the older technology doesn't work as well. We were at a point with our body worn camera technology with two things. Number one, we didn't have enough cameras for um, all of our officers that were in patrol related assignments, dealing with the public on a daily basis. But then also too, those cameras were beginning to fail, specifically body uh, uh, battery life. So for example, uh, in a 10 hour shift, it was not uncommon for an officer's camera to run down maybe three, four, six, seven hours into that shift and not last the whole shift. And we had some instances where that affected uh, a call that they were on, something that had happened where that camera shut down in the middle of that. So it was time to replace that technology. And when we did so and started moving forward, uh, we knew there might um, be some things with the new technology that wasn't present in the older cameras that we would need to sit down and negotiate with the FOP. And we did that. Um, thought we had an agreement in place and then some other factors entered into that and that that got uh, uh, shut down. And so we're kind of um, stuck where we are now. We have the new cameras in place. They are out there, but we don't have all the features activated. And uh, um, right now, the cameras that we're installing in our vehicles, uh, we can't turn those on at all until we reach some some type of agreement. And so I just feel it's important for the public to know that that their investment in technology, that we want to get it out there, we want to use it. Uh, but we were uh, not able to do that right now through the through the bargaining process. It seems like there's one of the key factors of the new one is the the switch that goes on. I guess when the the gun is drawn. Period. It, how how is it? How is the new stuff different from the old stuff as far as activation and that kind of stuff? Um, there are some automated features. Uh, for example, um, uh, like you said, when an officer draws their firearm, which to me and most of the officers I've talked to, that's a that's a safety feature. They don't want to have to mess with their camera if they're in the middle of a situation where they have to uh, draw their firearm. They don't want to be trying to push a button on a camera. Also, too, what you see is when officers are engaged in a pursuit or other high risk and stressful interaction, even a traffic stop. Um, that's just another thing that they have to do in the car. There's a lot of things going on in that vehicle when they're doing that. So it has automated features synced with the cameras that are in the car. So when that, uh, for example, when the overheads come on, on a patrol vehicle, the camera features are automated. It's also automated if um, multiple officers are on a call and one officer activates their cameras, uh, activates his or her camera, they don't have to, the other officers on the scene don't have to worry about that. It activates all of them there too. So, and these are just technology upgrades. Um, it's no different, you know, really the procedures we have now would apply to that. It's no different than Again, I compare it to like a cell phone. When you get a new cell phone with new features, um, you know, you want to use those features and, and, uh, and have those. And it, it's all about safety. It's all about, uh, you know, transparency and making things easier on those officers out in the field who already have enough to do as it is. Your statement mentioned that the disagreements coming from trying to add a recommendation from 21 CP. Can you talk specifically about what recommendation y'all were trying to add to the procedure and why that's caused issue with the FOP? Sure. Um, one of the uh, uh, things that we tried to implement as part of the bargaining process this year was the 21 CP recommendation to 
not view body camera prior to an interview after a critical incident, such as an officer involved shooting. Um, that was introduced into the bargaining this year. It was pulled away so that we could try and reach an agreement on some of these other things. Uh, but that entered into the equation when we entered that in into the uh, table on bargaining, then um, the uh, uh, the other items that we were trying to get through the body worn camera program were also pulled into that. So we tried to remove that so that we could reach an agreement and use the technology on our cameras that are out there now and get moving forward with this and work on some of those other things later. So does the FOP have an issue with the new technology specifically, or is their main issue with that new, the not viewing the video? I, I think you'd have to ask them, but I could tell you in our meetings that we originally had when we came to a, a tentative agreement, um, there really wasn't issues with the, the new technology um, in and of itself. And so basically, um, I think there were some things that they just wanted to clarify, which I appreciate to make sure that some of those new technologies, things weren't used so that it could be abused um, and that it could be only be used in, in the instances that there was a strong justification for using them. So I think they had some legitimate concerns there. But again, I, I felt like we worked that out. Um, but then this this other part with the uh, interviewing, when that got entered in, that kind of pulled some of that back. But but again, we've we've pulled that out for now to try and work that out later so that we can move forward with this technology and this this in car car technology too is something that we haven't had um uh, in our patrol cars and in the past so that is something that's new and different and that's part of the reason we wanted to uh sit down and negotiate this and get and get this going because i mean again the the, the majority of officers that you talk to out there they want this technology they want to use it um it's it's very beneficial to them it protects them it protects the community it helps us be transparent uh, we're getting ready to release information on a uh, on our most recent officer involved shooting and so you know our officers have become accustomed to this and they want that and want that protection with the fop filing a grievance what what is the next steps in this process so we we disagreed with the terms in the grievance um and uh it's at the point now where it will probably go to an arbitration um and then an arbitrator will rule on it and the reason, too, I felt it's so important is when this happened before um, that shut down our body worn camera program altogether. So the public definitely needs to know that, um, you know, that that's we, we hope that won't happen. Um, we hope it doesn't get to that. But that's always a potential that's out there. And therefore, I, that's why I felt like the public needed to know. When, when was that last dispute? I'm not 100% sure, but I think it was like 2016, 17, somewhere around in there. So when you say shut down the whole program, that would mean officers wouldn't be able to use the body cameras they already have? There's the potential that an arbitrator could say that until we reach an agreement that they could shut down, you know, what we have. Again, I'm hopeful that that won't happen, but if that potential's out there, you know, people need to know that. How long does arbitration usually take? It just depends. COVID has really delayed um, that process because normally you pick an arbitrator and then that person has to schedule a time in their schedule uh, to come in and, uh, uh, you know, handle the, the process um, with COVID. Th those times have been a little bit longer. Sometimes arbitrators won't travel and, uh, you know, we have to uh, sometimes schedule it a different way, maybe virtual. So it, it's, it's just uh, really random in how long it takes. It could take you know, six months, it could take a year, it could take three months. It just depends on the arbitrator. The investment for the new body worn camera technology, when was that um, actually approved? And when did you guys get the new technology? Um, I believe it was approved uh, by council back in October. Um, and we started, as soon as it was approved, we started implementing the cameras. Because again, the cameras we had were failing. Um, we're not working. We're not lasting the shift. So we rolled them out as, as quick as we could. And at this point, we haven't turned on. There's, as with any type of uh, technology advancements, there's a way that you can control that. And we haven't turned on a lot of the features. We've been installing the camera equipment in our vehicles as those vehicles come out. And uh, some of them are, are retrofitted, too. Um, but, uh, you know, the, the uh, officers themselves have the ability to turn that on or not. And... Uh, uh, you know, we've told them they don't have to turn those on right now because we don't have an agreement 
or a procedure in place. But some of them have turned on the new features? Not the new features, just the, the equipment that's in the vehicles. We ran a pilot program prior to um, implementation. And so as part of that pilot program and testing, uh, we had to test with the vendor to make sure it would work with our other equipment in the car. We, we were able to at least see what they what they do. But we're, the ones that we're installing now, um, they, you know, they, they, the point I'm trying to make is I can't keep them from turning it on, which we want them to turn it on anyway, but they've been told that, that that's not uh, covered as part of the, the new agreement. In the past, there was uh, complaints about the recording time and the storage. Has that been addressed with the new system? I'll resolve with the new system. Um, all the storage is cloud-based and uh, handled by the vendor. We don't we don't have to do um, anything, you know, as far as updating servers or anything like that. It's all handled by the vendor, and uh, it's much better quality video. Um, and again, that's part of our annual fees that we pay to have the vendor handle all, all that storage. You guys were planning on um, coming to an agreement when was the last time you guys talked to each other. Is it just through these press conferences? And are you planning on it attending the one that they have at 130 as well? Uh, no, I won't be attending that. Um, uh, we, we've been meeting regularly through contract negotiations, and we've reached out again very recently to try and, and resolve this latest issue, too. Anyone else? I guess just when was the grievance filed by the FOP? I don't remember the exact date. It's been within the last few weeks. And have you all met since they filed the grievance? Um, I haven't, uh, but there has been some, some meetings as far as contract uh, negotiations. There's been some meeting and discussion, but I haven't, I haven't been in those. Are there any concerns about any uh, security issues with the new system moving forward and this new vendor? No, it's uh, the, the vendor's been around for a long time. Um, we're not the first city to use this vendor. Um, it's uh, it's Axon um, is, is who we use, and, and they've been in the business a long time. A lot of major cities, cities larger than us, are using them and, and uh, have had very good success. <laughs> 